So hey YouTube, Kevin Francis back again. I want to talk to you about cameras. Um, for me, uh, starting off with this Canon camera, this T3i, buying it used at a very inexpensive price is a great way to start in the astrophotography hobby. And I have achieved some pretty decent photos from that. But it's at some point in time, I have to do an upgrade. I've tried to do this as cheaply as possible. Uh, but there are many ways that you can get a camera like this to be more like a camera like this. This is the ZWO ASI 183MC Pro uh, dedicated astronomy camera. We'll get into this in a second. But what's important to say about this is you can get this modified, right? You can have uh, special um, uh, camera modifiers go in and remove the IR cut filter that's in here and you get a better product from your camera with it modified. I've never modified this so of course my pictures are what they are based on the way this camera is. So we're, we're gonna do some comparisons. But so here's the ASI 183MC Pro. This is a cool camera. It's a color camera as well. So it's very similar to the DSLR uh, in that it's color, but it doesn't have filters in front of that sensor. So it's, it's gathering all of the light possible. It's got two USB ports, USB 2.0 ports, one USB 3 port, power location for the fan so that the fan can do the cooling. So, for lack of a better set of terms, this is actually a cool camera. So first set of differences between the two. This has a much larger sensor than this one. This is about a one inch um, square sensor inside of this camera. can't really see the sensor because it's covered, but take my word for it, you can look up the specifications online. So what that means for me is, this is simply considered a crop sensor, where this one is almost a full size sensor. This means that I can see, I have a larger field of view with the Canon T3i than I do with this. But there's some other differences we need to talk about. Okay, a few other differences we need to talk about. Pixel size. Pixel size for this camera, while it's got the larger sensor, also has a larger picture size at 4.2 microns. Smaller sensor, 2.4 micron pixel size. So what does that mean? I think what it means is that I can get more detail with 2.4 pixel size sensor than I can with this because I'm looking at a smaller field of view for each pixel versus this is pretty large and it can actually see a lot more of uh, the, the light, the photons uh, around it and combine them into what it thinks is the true light signature in that, at that photon. So you can split those photons up into more granularity with this particular camera, which I think I like improve my photography to that I, to where I can get a lot more uh, clarity and detail in my photos. Okay, since we're talking about pixels, let's talk about how efficient they are at gathering light. It's, uh, there's a metric that uh, is used called quantum efficiency. And simply it's a measure of how much light the pixels are actually using to generate your photo. And when I looked up the Canon T3i, it's at 40%. So what that means is 40% of the light that hits each pixel actually is gathered into the photo. Less light, less detail, less information for your photo, which means what you've got is a low, a low signal to noise ratio. And for astrophotography, you want a higher signal to noise ratio. When I looked up this one, the quantum efficiency is 83%, which means that 83% of the light is used towards signal to noise ratio. So you get a much better, higher signal to noise ratio, much better um, photo in the end you have more data to work with from this camera versus this one. All right, so let's talk
talk resolution between the two cameras 18 megapixel 20 megapixel totally different setup totally different sensors but they're very similar in terms of resolution so the zwo asi 183 mc pro it's a nice camera um, it comes with a lot of things you need it comes with the usb 3.0 cable it comes with the usb 2.0 cable as well so if you have a guide camera you can plug it in directly there you do have to buy the power cable to run the fan so that you can cool it um, i was able to utilize 12 volt or 3 amp um, adapter it comes with the case and on up here oops this case properly on this side of things, it comes with a group of adapters so that you can connect it to your telescope and be able to get your 55 millimeter back spacing um, for taking photos. Um, the adapters also come with a 1.25 millimeter uh, filter holder as well, a 1.25 inch filter holder as well, and, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, I did buy, and I don't have it yet, uh, a two inch filter holder, an adapter. Um, that's that I, with the drawer that I can attach to this because I have a two inch filter that I would like to use um, with this for deep sky astrophotography when that opportunity presents itself. Meaning the Atlantic needs to stop giving us these clouds so we can actually have some clear skies for once, maybe about a week or so. That'd be great. Can you do that? I don't know. Um, yeah, so I like this camera. It's been um, a joy to learn and I, I tell you, it's, it's about $800, and this was given to me as my Father's Day gift, but uh, it took more than a month to get it because of COVID. Um, so not a lot of experience on my end using it, but I do recommend at some point in your astrophotography growth, you do find a way to get to a dedicated astronomy camera at some point. You don't have to get rid of the DSLR if you already have it. Um, you can't even go the route of modifying your DSLR as a start to get you ready for having a camera like this. The DSLR takes photos um, in raw format. This gives you in fits format. So you get a little bit more information on each photo that you could use in your post-processing. Um, finally, the ASI, you've got to download software for it to work with your computer. So yeah, downloading uh, software for this, you have to do. Um, you can get it off of the ZWO website, uh, but your computer needs it in order to be able to recognize the camera. Um, and then once you've done that, then other apps can automatically know exactly what these are, like APT, astrophotography tool. Uh, so that's a little bit different from a DSLR, but you just plug in and everything knows what it is and it works, no problem. So the last piece that I have for you, which is going to be talked about more in a future video, is this battery is not working for me as well as it, I, I'd hoped. So I'm getting to the point now where I'm going out more often and I'm not able to plug in to the house and keep my rig going. So I've got to fully use the battery. The problem with this one is the moment I plug in my laptop, it just the laptop just drains it of its uh, power really fast. So I get what I should have several hours worth of time. I'm actually getting about an hour most with laptop and telescope camera all plugged into this one battery. So what I've done is I've purchased another battery. So it's a smaller one, but it's going to help. But I've also done something else. I purchased a Raspberry Pi. And the purpose of the Raspberry Pi is to be able to connect my laptop directly to the camera with no wires. I'm gonna do it wirelessly. Um, and so the camera will connect to the Raspberry Pi. Very simple uh, setup that's already uh, out there on the internet. And so I'm just gonna load that up on this Raspberry Pi. I connect it to my telescope and attach it to my mount. And the Raspberry Pi will handle the vast majority of the work going on to my telescope and just pass the information over to my laptop. This is the beginnings of being able to control my mount when I get to that point. So as I was telling in the previous video, um, I purchased the dual access motor controller to eventually be able to use it uh, in the form of a uh, go-to mount, right? I can connect Solarium to it and it would tell the mount where to go, do all the alignments, things like that. Um, so this would be part of helping me get to that point. Um, as well as, 
uh, controlling filters, so the controlling the camera. I could even put um, acquisition software on the Pi and just use everything on this Raspberry Pi and not even use my laptop. There's a lot of good functionality that's going to happen from this. Uh, first things first though, I'm going to want to disconnect the two simply because that laptop drains up my battery a lot and drains it fast. So I'm going to use two separate batteries. Both of them are small. They can handle the workload uh, and keep things going. Um, by the way, if you ever look at an ASI Air um, or anything like that that's controlling uh, your laptop, it's really an, a Raspberry Pi with some software on it. Same software that I'm getting ready to do. Instead of spending two, three hundred dollars for an ASI Air, you can spend seventy-five for one of these. Put the software on here, and you're doing the exact same thing as the ASI Air. So. Um, We'll talk about that in a future video and I'll show you how far I've been able to get with it and what I can do with it. So I thank you for sticking around and waiting until the end to see the photos. I'll get you those in a second. Um, just want to end with what I normally end with, which is the sky is only the limit when your mind is unwilling to fly. Be prepared to go beyond. That's how you get to the next level. So thanks again. Subscribe, like, tell your friends about my channel. This is Kevin Francis. See you later.